Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel where we talk all things true crime. I also pop in a little life vlog as well. I hope you appreciate today's case coverage, and if you do, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. It's free, and it really helps my channel grow. You can also hit that like button and comment your thoughts below on this case or topic that we're going over. For my returning Titans, welcome back for yet an upload. Thank you so much for joining me. Have you joined our members only group yet? If you haven't, there is still time to do so by clicking the join button below. And okay, so now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's case coverage. And this is actually a story that I've been covering on my channel for the last couple of days. It started as a missing persons case and it's kind of just developing from there. When this all comes to a close and we have a better understanding of the full story, I will come back and condense all of these into an overall video. Let me know if you would like to see that in the comments below and I will do that and I will make that um, a thing I do in all the, in all the cases that I cover. There, aren't, um, there weren't an, a lot of creators, sorry I can't speak today, talking about Rachel Castillo but as soon as I saw that she was a missing mother, I knew I needed to put her on my page. I wished for a better outcome before I played the newest in her case, but here's a little background. Rachel Castillo was 25 and a mother of two. She disappeared November 10th and relatives reported they discovered blood at her apartment where she had left behind her phone, keys, and car. Earlier that day, Castillo had met up with the children's father to give them over her visitation and her family didn't think her ex would have anything to do with her disappearance. The officers were taking it a little more seriously because of the amount of blood that was found in the apartment. Her body was found three days later in a remote area of the Antelope Valley, according to authorities. They have charged her ex in a connection with her death. 25-year-old Zabarb Ali was arrested Sunday at his parents' home in Victorville. He is currently being held on $150,000 bail on suspicion of murder and was scheduled to make his first court appearance today. But there has been no video of that. I've been trying to look all day. Um, and as of right now, it's Tuesday the 15th and it is 7.05 p.m. And I still haven't been able to find it. But I did want to go ahead and share with you this the news clip. So Valley here it is. Have been found. Authorities say her ex-husband may hold some answers. Now her parents speak out on their tragic loss. Good morning. You're watching Eyewitness News. I'm Giovanna Lada. It is the news many hoped would not come. Rachel Castillo, that missing mother of two, her remains were found yesterday in a remote location. Eyewitness News reporter Carlos Granda joins us live from Simi Valley with the latest. Carlos. Well, Giovanna, this is a very sad story. What police believe was a divorce, a breakup that led to murder. As you said, the victim is 25-year-old Rachel Castillo. And on Thursday, her sister arrived to their home. And, and when, when she, she went, went in, in, she found a lot, lot of blood inside. inside. She, she called 911. Detectives then found evidence of a struggle. Rachel, Rachel was missing, but her personal belongings, including her cell phone, car keys, and her car, were all still there, there at the home. At first, At first it was considered a missing person. person. But, but then information, information led detectives to the Antelope Valley where they found a body that turned out to be Rachel. Police, Police have now arrested her ex-husband in connection to her homicide. 25-year-old Zarbab Ali was arrested over the weekend at his parents' home in Victorville. Castillo's mother says that she even spoke to Ali over the weekend, and it seemed like a normal conversation. He expressed worry over Castillo missing. The mother says at the time she had no idea it would turn out that he would be charged with the murder. The victim's family says they're not trying to deal with this horrific tragedy. Their relationship was uh, mostly amicable. There were some um, difficulties along the way. I uh, really didn't expect it to turn out like this. I had spoken with him over the weekend, um, and he had expressed his concern. And at that point, I really had no idea that it was turn out that he had done that. Here's a mom that divorced her husband worked in a domestic violence prevention center, worked with battered moms. And, you know, it's kind of obvious, you know, why she probably divorced her husband. You know, I mean, the guy ended up showing up and murdering her. Uh, the evidence at the scene, the, the very uh, sort of impetus of this investigation 
will certainly help guide the investigation. We knew we had um, a very personal relationship between, likely, between uh, whoever was responsible. Now, a couple has two children. Police say they are safe and family is taking care of them. Reporting live from Sydney Valley, I'm Carlos Carmen, ABC7 Eyewitness News. So that's what I wanted to show you guys, that news clip there. Um, it's very tragic and very sad that this is another case that we have to come back and report on, you know, saying that the mother is unfortunately not with us anymore. And we have all these other cases going on where the mother may be involved in these cases and we're still not getting answers in those cases as well. So I'm hoping with this case, <clears throat> excuse me, that the officers seem to be doing their due diligence. They really do. They worked very fast on this case. And I think with that, they're going to work even faster on the prosecution, you know, obtaining all the evidence needed to get a conviction in this case and a quick one at that. But they did, they did set his bail at $510,000. And so he would only need about 55000 to post bail. That's 10%. So with that being said, is he a flight risk if he's out? Um, I don't know his family or his background. I know that she had Hispanic background, but I don't think that he does. It doesn't seem like. So what are his family's finances like? What are his finances like? Can he, you know, would he be able to get on a plane and get out of here without the, you know, the police being able to be right on his tail? Would he have to have a tethered, you know, maybe an ankle monitor if he is, you know, out on bail? Like with the Michael Vaughn case, you know, um, there, Sarah Woodra, the girl that's, you know, in jail right now on charges of, um, on charges related to that, she has, you know, the same sort of bond, but she has to wear a tethered ankle monitor. So maybe that's something that they need to put into the clause with him as well. He was supposed to go to court this morning. For some reason, it's not on YouTube, which I didn't think it would be on YouTube, but I was looking and I also looked on, um, you know, through the news articles and stuff in this, um, semi Valley area in California. That's where this case is from. And I still cannot find where they um, have released his um, either his WebEx or zoom, you know, court hearing or where he had had to go to his court hearing in person, which I'm sure it was probably done over zoom since it was an arraignment today, but I would really, uh, I would have really liked to have been able to see that. So I will keep my eye out for that. And that's really all I have for you for this video. If you would like for me to put this um, whole story together for you, I can, especially after he goes to court and things like that. And I get a better understanding of the charges against him and what exactly happened that night or that day. You know, was the kids in there? Did they see it? I hope not. And all, all of that. But, you know, I want to get the full story and all the facts for you guys so I can bring you a full story. But if that's something that you would like to see, please drop it in the comments below. I do appreciate the people that did reach out and thank me for covering this case. I have no problem covering these cases at all. I love the, the cases that are a little less known. So if you have any missing persons cases or any true crime cases, please send them to my email at titaniumbuiltboo at gmail.com. And also you can follow me on Twitter at titanium underscore built. And I also have a TikTok and Patreon at titanium built. And I will see you guys all in my next video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking that subscribe button, liking this video, and please comment below your thoughts on today's findings. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.